Hello and thank you for joining us on Journalist Hangout on Sunday. I'm Ajodili Uzubakum. Today on the program, on your governor, Makende, IGP teams, monarchs, makes today over killer headsmen matter as Afeni Ferry Arewa Consultative Forum disagree over the Sunday Boho's arrest. And later on the show, Nigerian universities in the news again as workers threaten strike from February 5. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Utstoju and Ad Wali Adiwe. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for joining us again. Now, it appears the center can no longer hold in all your states. Southwest Nigeria follow, following the eviction of some headsmen orchestrated by a community chieftain, Sunday Adeyemi, popularly known as Sunday Igboho, to avert anarchy in the peace center states. Governor Shei Makinde, a team from the Inspector General of Police and traditional rulers are meeting on the vexed issue of the killer headsmen. Meanwhile, Pan-Yoruba Social Cultural Group, Afendi Ferry, and Arewa Consultative Forum have disagreed over calls for the arrest of Sunday Igbo. But actually, let me start here. I have seen a lot of disturbing visuals. I've seen a lot of disturbing vi videos, and then um, I've seen Mr. Sunday Igbo giving ultimatum to Aosa Fulanu resident in Ibarakwa, this is Ibarakwa in Oyo State, mm. and, um, and after the seven day, they went there and they went to go and carry out that eviction. Before that particular day, the governor of um, Ojo State, Shei Makine, in the state broadcast actually warned that anybody that is seen, nobody has the rights, nobody has the um, right to actually give anybody ultimatum to leave any area in Nigeria that as well are guided and bounded by the 1999 constitution. Jide, for some days now, this has been on the front burner, in the front burner in the entire Southwest. What do you make of this Sunday Bo saga? Sunday Bo is one man fighting a just cause illegally. And um, you can have a just cause, but you must operate within the ambit of the law. So what Sunday Bo is doing is to pursue a noble cause, a good cause, illegally. Hmm. And what I mean by this is clear, because we live in terrible times where whatever you say, there are people waiting out there to twist it. Hmm. Fighting a just cause illegally. A just cause illegally. illegally. That's what he's doing. Why do I call it a just cause? Criminal headsmen have been kidnapping people in the whole of that area, raping people, and getting away with it. They've been destroying farmlands, getting away with it. There was a case of the, the big-time farmer who was based abroad, mm. the one uh, um, with the PhD, mm. who came into the state with the intention of setting up a big farm. It's our president who told us to go back to the farm. It's our president who told us that we must eat what we kill. The whole idea of getting us to, to uh, be growing rice is because we have the potential to even feed the continent of Africa by growing rice. One state in Nigeria, one state in Nigeria can feed the entire country. One state has the capacity to feed the entire country rice. But what do we have? People are reluctant to go back to farming. Young people do not have the incentive to go back to farming. We have a, 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 a farmer population that's aging. Mm -hmm. Then we now have the situation in which younger people are coming in. Yeah. They, have, they found farming pleasurable and rewarding. Mm. And the Thanks to the efforts of government, you know, and the backing that the CBN is giving farmers. But a situation in which 
criminal headsmen, I call them criminals because that's who they are. That's what they are. Who unleash their, their, their cattle on people's farms, trample on people's farms. And if you raise a finger, you get killed. That's what happened to the man. Before this thing happened, there had been complaints that people were being kidnapped, forced to pay ransom. Mm -hmm. And when they pay, when they, sometimes when they pay ransom, they still get killed. In their own land. If you remember sometime last week, I told Governor, because I knew that this thing would degenerate, I told Governor Shehima Kide to, to, to take control of the situation and provide leadership. I hope we can play back what I said yesterday, that anything short of that, we will have anarchy on our hands. If I were the governor, I would have gone to that community even before the ultimatum. Did he do that? He did not. Where people are pushed to the wall, where people are, are being killed on their ancestral land, when they get pushed to the wall, people will fight back. It may not even be in form of Sunday, but it could be somewhere else. In the north today, Hausa farmers responded to attacks by these same criminal headsmen by forming what we call Ensake. Mm. And the Ensake, what do they do? Even if there's an attack anywhere, they go after full and headsmen, and they start slaughtering them. It still happened just this uh, last week in Zamfara. And the governor said, have we not disbanded Ensake? Why are they still killing people? Because the cycle of retaliation continues. You kill me, you, you kill my people, we, we go for you. It happens in Kassina, it happens in, uh, in uh, Zamfara. And it's like that. So it's not only in your state that people have responded to criminal headsmen by forming vigilantes or by confronting them. It's happening in the north, and Sake. Read all the stories of Zamfara that happened last week. The governor was complaining that I have banned Ensake in this town, in this state, that any, uh, any traditional ruler who allows Ensake to kill uh, the uh, Fulanese will be uh, punished. This is what we have. I oppose um, Sunday Boho's approach. If I were here, uh, Sunday Boho, I would have handled it differently. When you come into a place and you say, we are driving all of you away because of the activities of a few people, of a few responsible people that we have not been able to expunge from the land because these people don't deserve to live. Because of the activities, you cannot make a wholesale ban. You can't be provoked to the point that you now say everybody should go. There are many uh, Fulanese who are doing legitimate business in the Southwest. There are many Fulanese who exhibit exemplary behavior. Some of us, some of our best friends are Fulanese. Yeah. I've said it before, I even mentioned some of my best friends who are Fulanese. But we can't have a situation in which you say everybody should go. Yeah. No. We were well, still trying to defend uh, what uh, they accused the governor of Ondo State of saying. Mm -hmm. We were still trying to say, okay, this was not what he said. But look at what is happening now. When Arewa wants to, uh, to comment on it, they will claim that the governor said everybody should go. We are twisting it. We have a talent for twisting uh, stories. Mm -hmm. Wally, sorry, Bo. Well, I, I think we may not get the whole picture if we settle in uh, on him as an individual. I think Sunday Boho is a phenomenon that uh, is, a, is, a, is, is a response to a cause. The fundamental problem is what Babagide has said. People's ancestral homes, land, are being invaded by alien forces. People, you know people have attachment to land. Is their spirituality, their forest dependent, is where they get their health hubs in local areas. There are second groups that they don't allow strangers to enter. Some of these second groups have been there for hundreds of years. People don't have, outsiders don't have the right to invade them. Now, we see that for years, 
for the past few years, the has the has men have been invading these territories, not just in your state alone. Mm. And I'm aware that several complaints have been made, like the one mentioned by Baba Gide, one Dr. Borodu, he employed 200 people mm -hmm. with a plan to employ 500 more people in the next two years. Mm -hmm. What happened was that they visited this man with their cows, destroyed the whole cow, and then killed the man. The traditional ruler of Igongon, his son was kidnapped. And I understand he paid four million uh, ransom. So when the custodian of people's tradition values also becomes a victim, mm -hmm. then you know it's a lost issue. And these people, we should not we should not confuse them with the pastoralists that have been living with Yoruba <coughs> people for over 150 years, who normally tend uh, cows. In fact, there are Yoruba people that even own cows. They give it to them to nurse for them. But these elements, like the president you know, said, they are mainly from other parts of the country. And I think there is no justification for anybody to come from over 1,000 miles away mm -hmm. to come and invade people's ancestral homes. The impact on security, on food security, is, is, is great. People can no longer go to farms. People cannot go to stream. It's either they will be raped or something will happen. And I'm so disturbed that Ibuho gave seven days' notice. This, the Oyo State government did not invite him. The IG did not invite him to even say, okay, what is the problem? Let us discuss. They waited for these seven days to elapse. He went to that community with a large number of vehicles. I saw the video. In, in hundreds, they passed through police checkpoint. Nobody stopped them. When they got to that community and had the rally and then left. So I felt if the government is serious, immediately he gave that notice, the normal thing would have been to invite him and then divide the community so that you can nip in the board yes. possible breakdown of law and order. Mm. So this is the kind of situation we have. The government also has you know, to shoulder a lot of blame. OK, I have Senator Shul Sani joining us. Thank you for joining us, Senator. Hello? OK, tell Hello. us what you make of the crisis between herders and farmers in all your states. Um, uh, thank you for having me. Well, um, the farmer header crisis in Oyo State is a continuation of the violence that has been unleashed uh, specifically by headers against farmers, as it happens in most parts of northern states. In the states of Kasana, Kaduna, uh, Zamfara, Benue, Plateau, and even Taraba State, in the last few years, it has all been held. It is unfortunate this violence has been going on, and all efforts made by the government and security agencies has been unable to address the problem. Villagers have been sacked from their homes. They have dispossessed people of their lands. They have extorted millions of Naira from people whom they have kidnapped. And they have made life so unbearable for millions of people. No responsible government will fall in arms and see this band, armed bandit unleashing mayhem and becoming a state within a state without a serious action being taken. And like I've said, one of the tragic consequences of government failing to take the responsibility of its security apparatus is that people will ha have to come out of their homes and defend themselves. And this is a situation which I have found ourselves in this country. It has been done time and again. Millions of people are now terrorized. Thousands of people have been displaced from their homes in most of the states, and nothing has been done to address the problem. Even if it has been done, but it has not been able to produce any results. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, what you see, the action people are taking, is the consequences of the failure of the state apparatus yes. to live up to their responsibility. Mm -hmm. cool. And you cannot dictate to people how they should respond to what is a matter of life and death to them. Yes. What is unacceptable is the extremity in which the responses takes place. Innocent people should not be caught because of the crime of a very few of them. And I think 
uh, it is not only in some of the states in the southwest. Wherever it is happening today, if the government fails to take responsibility and act on it, then people have no choice than to protect their lands, their lives, and livelihood from these armed bandits who have become overwhelming on the state. Yes. Julie, you're trying to correct that impression that it's not heard as farmers um, clashing um, um, this thing that's happening in all your states. Yes, um, what we have is the Barapa people confronting armed banditry. That's what, that's what the issue is. It's mm -hmm. not a case of farmers mm -hmm. and headsmen clashing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No. Banditry is being confronted. Banditry represented by people masquerading as headsmen. They, they parade themselves as headsmen, but they are not headsmen. They are criminals. Criminals who deserve to be, to be exterminated from the face of the earth. They are the ones kidnapping people. True headsmen who are interested in tending their cattle, mm. they have no time to be, to be kidnapping people. No. Mm. These ones are bare-faced criminals. So it is those criminals that the community is confronting. It is those criminals that are kidnapping people. The complaint largely is that they are kidnapping mm -hmm. and causing them to mm -hmm. pay ransom on their own land. So it's criminality that the people are confronting. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. If we simply say, oh, farmer head has men classes. No, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. It is banditry. Mm. So let us uh, show, Sunny. Now, I want to believe we, we have the same situation up north. And what do you think is the best solution? Well, first of all, uh, it is still important that we understand the enormity of this uh, uh, criminality of these bandits. In states like Niger, three local governments, Munya, Rafi local government and Shirola government are virtually under the control of these bandits. Mm. They have killed clergymen, traditional rulers, students, uh, women, and children. They have displaced over 40 to 50 percent of people living in rural areas and have taken control. They are an authority unto themselves. They move in motorcycles, two to three hundred motorcycles with three people with AK-47 on them, unleashing mayhem and killing people. In the states of Kaduna, where I live, in local governments like Igabi, like Giwa, like Birnangwari, uh, most part of southern Kaduna, are virtually being penetrated by these bandits, and they are doing the, the startling work of killing people and displacing people of their homes. In the state of Zamfara, and Kaduna state is the same thing. Now, the approach to this is that the state must be, the country, the government must be resolute as far as these people is concerned. No responsible government should fold its arm and see all these things here taking place. The unfortunate thing that has happened in the South with in Ondo is the word quick notice. And that quick notice has been so politicized on so many issues. Uh, the IPOB use it, the Arewa groups use it. And it has been used on Father Kuka and so many. So it has been demonized. But the fact is that any attempt to sanitize the state as far as flushing this bandit because it's a welcome development. The carrot and stick approach. The carrot approach has been applied in Kasana and Zafar State. It has not worked. Yes. These bandits are not interested in peace. They are not interested in orderliness and stability. Uh, if you want them to stop killing people and burning villages, you simply have to continuously give them money, and that is not possible and it's not going to work. And then the second approach is the use of the state apparatus. The military, the police, and all urgency of the state must be proactive. How can you say, for example, now, one of our relations has been kidnapped. They made a demand of 10 million, it was paid. And they made another demand that we should add 5 million. It was paid. And then they made another demand that until we add 25 million before we will be free. It has become a business. And the only way for the innocent ones 
to be able to free themselves from the activities of these criminalities is to distance themselves and align themselves with constituted authority yes. so that these criminals <laughs> can be attacked. Mm. We mm -hmm. cannot address this problem without the use of technology. Whatever that is done at this present time, we need to use technology. These criminals are not moving in group one or two. They move in three to four hundred a motorcycle. They are not headsmen. They are bandits, they are criminals, and they are terrorists. And action must be taken. And nobody should defend them. Nobody, because they, they, what they are doing is not simply against the people of Oyo, Ondo, or Northern Ireland. They are rubbishing the image of the government and the president himself. So we must take the proactive state of a state step of using technology to know where they are and to extinguish them because they are a menace, they are a cancer, they are a scourge to our country, and they must be dealt with. Well, hello, uh, Congratulations, Sonia, how are you? I quickly want to ask you a question. Did you have a, an initiative, probably driven by Northern Elders? or individuals like you that you think could be part of the solutions to the problem, apart from waiting for the government at all times? Oh, oh I think we've lost <laughs> the there. No. But you know, reacting to what um, Senator yes. Shows and yes. said, he, 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 he made no attempt to the mm. He you said know? this, uh, that nobody should defend this woman. Mm. You see, when the governor of Ondo State said that they should leave the forest reserve, I was surprised that some people started saying, no, why we are not, we should not send people packing. Mm. Nobody has the right to graze in the, in the forest, forest reserve. reserve. That is why it is called reserve. Mm. It is called reserve for a reason. Let's not, let's not always allow emotions to trump logic in the way we, we say things. What are they doing in the, in the forest reserve? The forest reserve is where they keep the people that they kidnap. Mm. Mm. Those forests, they are largely in Ondo North. Yeah. If on, all, all of those areas, yeah. right up to the border yeah. with, uh, with, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, those states. Mm -hmm. So a governor sat down and thought, OK, the way to go about this is let us address the root cause. You are the same people who accuse governors of simply taking security votes. They are not proactive. And the governor tries to be proactive. He knows that those forests are the places where they keep kidnappers. Mm -hmm. And he say, no, don't go leave that forest. We don't want to see you in the forest. He had a meeting with them and the Ibera community because he knows that some other people collaborate with these guys. They are the ones who sell cigarettes and all this stuff for them by the roadside. Mm. They know them. Mm. The governor wants them to be fished out. She Usani too said that, see, the best thing for the responsible headsmen to do is to work with government. Yeah. Best way. Yes. There's, there's nothing wrong in uh, um, uh, registering your trade. If you want you to apply your trade in the state, there's nothing wrong in registering with government. So that, let us isolate the criminals. If we, we, and I will advise the Ondo state governor to get soldiers to go to those forests. Mm. Anyone found there is a suspect, mm. is a kidnapper. What is he doing in the forest? Mm. Mm. Especially when he's there and he has not got any, any cattle. If he has cattle, let him live before the expiration of the deadline. But if he's just there, then he's a criminal, he's a suspect, and justice should be served to him. A few days back, uh, around that same or war mm. there was a shootout between the army and kidnappers. Mm. Four kidnappers were killed, mm. and two of our soldiers were injured. Mm. We have to sustain the momentum. Akre Dolu has to sustain the momentum. He has contact with Abuja. The president is his friend. He's been the president's loyalist for years. Mm. He has to put his foot down that, look, I need to protect my state. This was how people sat back, didn't take the actions that they were supposed to take initially. And we have what is happening in Zamfara now. Mm. Must we close our eyes 
or listen to people who do not think deeply before they post stuff on social media, before we take action in, uh, in, our, in, in, in the Southwest? Are we going to fold our arms and what things degenerate? Because this is how it starts. It starts, mm. you know, at an embryonic level. And then before you know it, mm. the whole area, you cannot, people can't go to farm, you cannot bring it under control again. We are still in a state where we can bring it under control. It has not reached the point of Niger State, it has not reached the point of Zamfara, it has not reached the point of Kaduna, and this is the time to move. Mm. Sunday Boho is just a distraction. The real intention, the real intention is to flush criminals out of mm. those forests in New York State and other places. And we must put our eyes on the ball, keep our eyes on the ball. We must still go ahead and flush them out of those places because they don't belong there. Mm. So let's leave Sunday Boho's matter and concentrate on the substance. Senator Show Sunny, it's now becoming a north-south thing. Narewa is talking, Afeniferi is talking. Uh, well, you know, in Nigeria, going by, uh, going through our history, uh, whenever things like this happen, you are bound to see a lot of interpretations. And uh, groups like this, uh, looking at uh, reasons why they were formed and also the the focus of their own agenda. Uh, they are bound to look at things uh, from their own prism, from their own perspective. But uh, in the general sense that no sane and responsible person will ever come out to defend the atrocious and heinous activities of these criminals. Uh, as, as someone who uh, is from Kaduna, I cannot move one or two kilometers outside of the city of Kaduna without uh, the fear of getting into the hands of these armed bandits. Mm. So for those of them from even the northern part of the country, they should know that bandits have unleashed more terror and mayhem and killed more people in the, our own part of the country, and uh, which we have a responsibility to do what we need to do, not even in the southern part of Nigeria. And uh, look at it now. Uh, just the last few uh, minutes, I have gotten a report in some places around Jerry, which is not very far from Abuja. Um, about three to 400 of them motorcycles have been sacking villages and sending people out of their homes. Now, who? in the name of any ethno-sectional uh, organization, will come out and defend the activities of these people. Our own concern is secure and protect the innocent cattle rearers. But armed headsmen killing people, dispossessing people of their land, are criminals mm -hmm. and should not be protected yes. and should not be defended because their activities run contrary to law. And the danger of siding with these or pampering them is the fact that other persons will be prompted to protect their homes and protect their land. It is burning the houses of uh, Seriki is not the best thing to do. It is wrong to do. But the fact that criminality of armed bandits has reached such a point that you can't act until you take a proactive step of protecting the people. If not, when the people rise up, their anger, their rage will define their own responses to how these issues should be tackled. What have we done in northern part of Nigeria? I gave a suggestion. From Kaduna to Abuja is about 160 kilometers. There are about 37 villages. How have we involved them in securing this road? Have we reached out to the villagers, to the community leaders, whose land and whose farms and whose homes have been dispossessed of by these bandits. Nobody has done that. Solutions are that Operation Lion, Operation Tiger, Operation Snake, Operation Python have all been launched and people have been killed and these people are still acting with impunity. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, if there is any group in our own part of the country is coming out with solutions that will address even the banditry, the killings, the kidnappings in the north, not even to talk of uh, speaking on what is happening in the southern part of Nigeria. 
So we are under siege, and the solution to that should be that government must act without fear or favor or trying to protect anybody in order to secure our people. If not, this country will simply move to a third state. I guess we are all on one page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't watch Nigeria degenerate uh, to a third state. We mm -hmm. can't. I've heard people say, oh, Sunday Boho is, uh, did what he did because he had a misunderstanding with the governor, with, uh, governor Shei Makinde. People with a jaundiced um, approach to a very serious issue. Mm. The first time I heard Sunday Boho talking on BBC mm. on this matter, was before his quarrel with the government. Mm -hmm. Was before the election. I still have the video. Mm -hmm. So someone mm -hmm. sits on social media just spewing rubbish. That oh, it's because he had a quarrel with uh, uh, the governor. Then he wanted to, uh, to, 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 to even up with the governor. Wanted to embarrass the governor. He had been talking about this matter for yeah. well over a year. Mm -hmm. After all, their quarrel is not up to a year old. Mm -hmm. He was with the governor during the election in, uh, in Kogi, mm -hmm. which was in December 20, uh, mm -hmm. 2019. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about? So the, the, the truth is, he saw an opportunity to give himself that larger than life uh, attitude, I mean, uh, uh, image. People are now oh. referring to him as mm. yes, the area of the Kaka for the Yoruba land. Because the government failed to do mm. his duty. Mm. That was why I said, why would, didn't the Oyo governor go to that place yeah. before now? To go and mediate. Yes. Mm. Have that done way, that. Mm. Igbo will have had no reason to go back there the second time. And that threat would not have been carried out. And governors must begin to deal decisively with traditional rulers who play a very negative role in some of the crises that mm. we are facing. Mm. We are seeing the Selling land uh, to people, land to people strangers arbitrarily. at the expense you of know? your own people. Yes. Even collaborating with criminals. Mm. There are some leaders who do that. Mm. I've seen, uh, even in Zamfara, a district held, head murdered mm. because he was said to be uh, uh, fraternizing with bandits. I've seen the governor sack an emir. I've seen the governor suspend uh, um, uh, um, other, other people, so yeah. district heads and the, and the rest. It still happened uh, last week. So our governors must be hands on. They should not imagine that this crisis cannot come to, to the southwest. You can hear Senator Shiro Sane say, saying that he cannot move outside of uh, Kaduna, Kaduna yes. without the mm. fear of being kidnapped. Mm. Yeah. In those yeah. days, it used to be fun for us going to play in Zaria. Mm. We were walking in Kaduna, we just Kaduna. were in Zaria. Mm. We under one hour, we are there. Today, you first ask the question. Mm. I, I hope safe. the road is safe. Mm. I hope there was no, uh, mm. you know? So mm. people are scared. We can't continue to mm. live in this manner. And mm. if government continues to fail in its responsibility, individuals will take we'll the take law initiative. into their hands. Yeah. Mm. The essence of government is to take control of these situations and solve this problem. And we have the capacity, they have the budget at their disposal to do these things. Not wait for individuals like uh, Sunday Bo to now uh, uh, assume the, uh, the role of uh, the chief security officer of a state. It can only happen where you fail to, 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 to do your job. Hmm. Well, he is saying that, look, it's because the government has failed to rein these people in. That's why, in the interest of his own people, that they want them to stop killing his own people. That's why he's taking the responsibility into his hand. Yeah, it's logical. Because, naturally, um, the first law of nation is self-preservation. If somebody comes to your father's land and invades your land, kidnap people that are working there, the first thing you do is you want to make sure that that person does not come back. So, absolutely, I think he touched the issue very well. It's a reflection of incompetence on the part of the government, the federal government and also the real state government. State government yeah. yeah, because like Baba Gide said, it's been on for a, a very long time, about two, three years, yes. that this, you know, the people in the Barapa, Okay, we'll I've been complaining about kidnapping, raping, but you know, nothing has been done. Oh, of course, the past governor didn't do anything. But what of you? 
So you have to, I mean, I'm sure as the governor, he gets the quality report every day. It's on so, that road that yeah. our colonial was killed. Was killed. If you remember. Mm. Yes. On that road. Mm. So what, what have you done? Mm. Like I said, Iboho gave no seven just. days notice. Mm. Within the seven days, the governor did nothing. Now when Maybe the there's a problem. Was, was just bluffing. I mean, mm. uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a very complex thing. The Sardinian's palace was burnt. Mm. We don't know who, who, who was responsible for that. Mm. It could have been a third party. That wanted to come in between the, mm. you know, Ibuho and uh, mm. you know, it could be some rogue intelligent people mm. that just decided to put fire because in that. It was that. not there. It was when not the there. Was you know, we saw the rally. It was a peaceful rally, and they left. Then in the night, the place was set on fire. Mm. So you could see that it could be a third party trying to cause, problems. cause you know, mm. more havoc in the state. So we need to take decisive action before this place becomes another northeast. Okay, let me take five, Senator Shows and his final take. What's your final take on this, Senator? Well, uh, my final take on this is that um, the federal government should support the state governors to bring an end to this violence. We must deploy uh, the necessary technology, and um, we shouldn't color this issue on ethnic, sectional, or religious uh, uh, matters. We should take criminality as criminality. Bandits are terrorists, killing and kidnapping people, and they should be treated as such. There should be no defense or protection based on ethnicity of any sort. And it is the, there's a need for uh, northern religious and traditional rulers to emulate what Sheikh Gumi is doing now, reaching out to the bandits, uh, making sure that the good ones have been separated from the bad ones, and trying to see how this problem can actually come to an end. But um, people holding AK-47, killing people, unleashing mayhem and kidnapping people should be treated as criminals and should be extinguished from where they are perpetrating such crime. I want to thank you, thank Senator Shu Sani. I want to thank you for your brilliant contribution there. Um, gentlemen, because this thing, a, a lot of Nigerians, you know, um, when we have... Um, issues like this will become divided mm. and a lot of people are so biased mm. they can't afford to be objective mm. but the way you know senator showed sasani has dealt with this issue shows that is um now my, my respect for him remains the there are very few nigerians who were never influenced by ethnicity you know and other issues and they even try to um, blackmail the rest of us who want to speak the truth. They want to blackmail us and call us names, call us enemies of APC and all that rubbish. You know, in our land, we may, mm. let us not say the truth again. Mm. You know, so this is the, the this is the thing. That you, only are, you, are, you are, your, your capacity to say the truth is hampered by your ethnicity, by the political party that you support. <laughs> that means you've got no conscience. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Matters that concern uh, uh, life, the lives of hum mm. human beings, mm. we should be able to rise above sentiment mm. in addressing matters. Governor Akedolu never said Fulani should leave the state. He said that should headsmen leave. should leave the forest. The forest, yeah. Reser the forest reserve. That's what he said. Mm. But see the way we are twisting it. See the way somebody called me said today, what's wrong with that governor? So why should I said, did you see the press statement? He never said so. The man was misquoted. And up to today, you see, see some groups. I saw one group to CNG still accusing him of expelling Fulani when he didn't say so. Mm. Educated people, mm. educated people, people who are supposed they speak excellent English, so. mm. <laughs> but their hearts. Their hearts, <laughs> eminent, I mean, mm -hmm. manifestly rotten in terms of the capacity for evil. Mm. Never objective. Never. They would rather die than be objective. What kind of human beings are that? And when a nation needs to come together, look at that Seri Kifula Neda we, we, we brought here. Yes, Alaji See Bambadu. the way he spoke. Mm. Mm. He said, if we too we oppose the idea of people staying in the forest. Mm. He knows that his people are not there, yeah. that the people who are there are the criminals. Mm. But mm. somebody will sit in Kaduna 
and, and be saying, no, hey, why are you, uh, why did you expel people? Why did you give people ultimatum? Why did you uh, tell people to quit? When the governor didn't say people should leave the state. Yeah. I mean, that means you are not just uh, um, an ignorant peddler, you are also a purveyor of evil lies. Lies meant to, 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 to bring evil upon our land. That's okay. who they are. Okay, I have Alaji Mohamed Kabir Labo, that's Seriki Fulani of um, Ogun State and Secretary of Association of Fulani Chiefs in the Southwest. Thank you for joining us, Alaji. How are you? Good afternoon, Uncle. Yes, I know you also you are also experiencing the same challenge in Ogun State. Can you tell me in the last three weeks what your experience has been? Uh, actually, uh, Ogun State has been peacefully. Anyway, uh, it's just the news going around the country. And then that will not, I believe, with experience and how we're managing our host communities with our people. We believe such a, a problem will not uh, happen in the Southwest by the special guest of God. Mm -hmm. Even though the recent uh, happening in uh, Igogo town with uh, my colleague. There is a plan if I that his house was burned down. Uh, we believe um, with, with the steps we are taking, related with the security agencies, related with the state governors, and in Akure now, as I'm speaking to you, mm -hmm. I'm sure we meet the state governor by the special of God. Mm -hmm. I believe, and I also heard from the other part, my colleague that is in Akure, the chairman of the Allah, he has already related before now. That the statement of the governor wasn't what is uh, people are what we are hearing mm. that they should evict our people from that state. It wasn't so. It was called, and the governor spoke to their presence that there are certain things that are pushed into this form, rare cattle in the city, in the municipal area, and the forest area where they believe uh, uh, activities of uh, crime have been taking place. That those are people should be from there because. The security agencies need to go there and comb the area. Yes. So we agree with that. And I believe we'll simply go ahead and maybe hold a conference and address the issue. All what we are seeing with our neighbors, I mean with our hosts, is they should become security challenges is everywhere, mm -hmm. all over the world, not even in Nigeria. But uh, as far as uh, Sadi Show has said, uh, crime does not have ethnicity. A crime is being perpetrated by human beings and be aided by so many people. It could be the host, because these crimes that are being perpetrated all over the country, it is jointly organized. For instance, a kidnapper. A kidnapper, before he kidnapped, he, he will have to host a uh, lot somewhere in the city. He will have to walk around and get to know the terrain by somebody else. Mm -hmm. So definitely, crimes are organized, jointly organized by criminals not uh, uh, an ethnic group. So for that, we will believe our host will be sampering mercy and we'll look, at the, uh, we'll look at it critically so that we'll live as, as peaceful as we are. Yeah. Because a full animal is always peaceful. We have our assets, we have our commodities all over the world exposed to all communities where they know where we are. So we don't believe in living our, our normal duties and get involved in criminality as far as full animal is concerned. Yes. So for that, we are calling for all uh, groups, all uh, organizations, if you come into it and look it critically so that they will address this issue amicably. Nobody wants war. I, that I'm sitting with you, I'm the full animal of Abiyo Kuta. I'm also the chairman of the of full animal, uh, of the full animal Southwest. I'm also the chairman of the ATL of Southwest. So tell me all these positions, which part of the country do I have to go and get them? <laughs> Whereas I was born and brought up in the southwest, in Abu Kuta. I'm now 47 years old. Where do I have to go and start life again? I've been enjoying my peaceful life here. I've been cooperating with all security agencies to make sure we expose what we are doing as far as the good citizens of Nigeria is concerned. So what else than to please with every group that is standing up for this uprising. We don't want to speak. Uh, Seriki, how can um, we identify some of these uh, people 
um, pretending to be headsmen who, in any case, are just uh, criminals. A lot of them are not even Nigerians. How can we, um, or how can Mieti Allah collaborate with government to identify these undesirable elements so that uh, we all can have peace? Thank you very much. Uh, we've been working with the security agencies, especially the police force. We've been having town hall meetings. We are members of PCRC, one avenue to relate much more. If we have any visitor that comes in within our community that we can identify, we immediately report to the police agency and any other security agency that is available in our stock. Uh, Oyo State, in particular, the chairman of the HLA in Oyo, uh, the former chairman, the president of uh, Benlo, yes. Yakumu Benlo. He established vigilante groups, making it with uh, the VGA services. That is our members. Those that will be very close to him, will be very close to their community, and be able to ambush or even relate. Quick, quick, the security agency, if there is any alarm at all. So we have a lot of modalities that is working in place with the security agencies, with the host communities. Then they what are you, whatever. If you come, if you call the police, they will tell you this. They will attest to that. He was one time awarded one of the most useful standing man in the state by the security agency, with, just because of his activity. So tell, tell me, my brother, whatever they have in ourselves, we will relate because we believe we are minorities. We don't want anything that will cause havoc, that will just stop all of us. So this is. Uh, one way of relating either if, because if a criminal comes into the community, I mean, if a soldier comes, I want to perpetrate an evil act from somewhere. It's easy to identify him. Yes. Because we believe in peace. So I think this is what you have been doing, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you I think he spoke very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a very good example of people who have been living outside their own traditional homes. Mm -hmm. You know, indicating that it's not every Fulani that you see that is a criminal or any or every artsman. In my own community, we are Fulani there. They have been living there for the past 150 years. Mm -hmm. yes. What is that? That's very close to a local government. Mm -hmm. They have been there for 150 years. In the Kitty States? Yes. One of them is my best friend, Bamu. He doesn't speak any other language, no Fufude, no English, only Yoruba. So generations of who have been there, mm. they take their country without causing any trouble. Mm. When I met the Seriki uh, Fulani in Lagos here, mm. he said he represents the third generation of Fulani that have lived in Lagos. Mm. And any time he travels to Sokoto, his children will be telling him, let us go home. That's coming back to Lagos. That's their home. They don't see Sokoto as their home any longer. So we, we must work together with genuine people who really want to identify criminals. So it's not the business of state government alone. Every nationality, like the full identity to uh, military and, and all that, they will sure come together to, you know, to pinpoint those that are bad uh, X so that we can, we can deal with them decisively. We should not read religious or ethnic meaning into this crime. Hmm. Because people that are being kidnapped, they won't ask whether are you a Muslim or are you from a Birayu TV. Hmm. They just take the person away and collect the money. Uh, my greatest they don't care whether you are full or not. So they don't even ask you questions mm -hmm. whether which tribe do come from. I've interviewed people that were kidnapped before. They take them to the bush. They just waylay them. Anybody that is there, is their money the that after? They are only mm -hmm. after their money. And we should be worried about what the what do they do with the money? Collecting millions. Mm -hmm. They use those that money to know. buy more guns. So we really need to do a lot of intelligence networking. You remember what uh, Connect Togo said. His background is DMI, Director of Military Intelligence. Three weeks ago, he said armed men, you know, were moving in, in large numbers from Mali, passing through Okeogun to Oyo State. Mm. And I'm sure before he could come out openly to make that statement, he must have passed that information mm -hmm. to the government. So what did we do about it? So we need to take decisive so action wide open. so that we don't have 360 circle mm. of violence from mm. northwest to north central, middle bed, Southwest, and then you have your country in a uh, very big place. Literally, you know, you'll, be, yeah. you'll, you'll be surprised if you go to Moshe, go to Agege, go to Ketuma, 12 years. You have those Fulanese. 
-hmm. They speak flawless Yoruba language. Yes, no accent. No, no accent. No, no, no uh, mm -hmm. full and accent. Just you, you just speak and you think this person is a Yoruba. You know, remember uh, Elijah Danjuma here in Agege here now. Mm -hmm. Elijah Danjuma, his best friends were the Yoruba musicians. I remember mm -hmm. those live plays that Sonia Day used to uh, used to do in those days. Praising Alaji Danjuma to high heavens. Haji Danjuma, Lagege, Haji Danjuma, you know? So, if people, someone like Danjuma, you cannot tell him that he has any other home apart from Agege. Yeah. So, you can't no. generalize and mm. tell Third all of generation the generation people, mm. they've been here for three generations. Mm. How do you tell them to go? They too have as much stake as everyone in the peace of this area. The mm. truth is, when there, when there is no peace, they too also suffer. Mm -hmm. I was a friend of mine in Taraba, a journalist who was kidnapped by, by headsmen. He said, the people, uh, by criminal headsmen, he said, the people who are, uh, kidnapped me were full and it's like me. Mm -hmm. And they showed no mercy. Mm -hmm. In fact, they looked at him, they, pressed his, they were pressing his body and said, we are smelling money. We are smelling money. Mm. And this guy was just a uh, press secretary. Mm. He didn't have money. Mm. But okay. in the end, he, they had to part with millions before it was released. So mm. we are dealing with a clear and present danger. Everyone is in danger of yeah. being kidnapped. Yeah. Whether mm. you are full or this thing, crime does not know ethnicity. Uh, they are all yeah. victims. Yeah, we are all victims. <laughs> what, uh, look at what the, the Seki was saying in that BBC. Um, interview. He said, when these people are, are arrested, they always say, oh, I came from Kebi, I mm. came from uh, Sokoto, mm -hmm. I came from this, I mm. came from that. So the Senegal was trying to say, look, the people usually involved in this thing are not a part of us. Mm -hmm. We have been living here peacefully. That's the point I was making. So mm. attention must be shifted. Those who come in, we have to pay attention to people streaming into our communities. Mm. Otherwise, there will be greater um, uh, mm. trouble in the days ahead. All right, we'll take this breather. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still Journalist Hangout, a special edition for Sunday. We'll be right back after this timeout. Please stay with us. Don't go away. the best political program from the best TV station of the year. And we're reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria. And even the governor of Nasara State, that's Governor Abdullah Sule, has raised alarm about the influx of Boko Haram to, into Nasara State. If you remember, they used to gather at a place called Utu in total local government area. Uh, when I came here the last time, I appealed to Mr. President, and then the uh, DSS, police, Air Force, Army had a joint operation, and they were able to dislodge them. When they dislodged them, a lot of them were killed. Some of them ran away and leave their members of the family. We took hostage about 900 members of that family into life here, including children and their wives. And a lot of, uh, so the special forces of the military that we have, which is based in Nasarawa State in Duma, you know, actually took the hostage. And a lot of interrogation was done, and most of them confirmed that they were indeed Boko Haram. A lot of them were, were families of different people in the country that were kidnapped. And when they were kidnapped, in most cases when they kidnapped uh, women, they married them off. Okay, so they had a lot of women that they kidnapped and married them off. So by, by releasing them back to their various states and their families, you know, it was there. And nearly uh, 17 states where uh, we got people from about 17 states and then few from the Nigeria Republic. You know, and those from the Nigeria Republic, we handed them over to DSS. But those from different states, we handed them over to their various, the various state uh, uh, government. And they were able to take them over through the DSS of the uh, states. Babajire, yes. Governor Abdullah Sule, and if Boko Haram has succeeded in infiltrating Nasara states, that means they're very close to the federal capital territory. Mm. 
Yes, um, he went to see the president and he expressed his concerns to the president. The IG already um, said that Boko Haram was uh, present in uh, the North Central, but it's a faction of Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. The part of Boko Haram is called the Daru Salam, which was uh, branded um, a terrorist group mm. uh, late last year. Mm. So it's a, it's a faction of Boko Haram, uh, that used to be part of Boko Haram, that is terrorizing people in, uh, in, um, in that place. And they've also operated uh, in uh, Niger State and some parts of Kaduna. In fact, the attack on the, I think, the Emir of Port School, where they killed some so of they the, expanded some of their the territories age, from Yubi, the the Adamawa, the and the Emir was carried out uh, by them. So uh, it, no, Port School, okay. uh, uh, yeah, one of the Emirs, he came to Kaduna, so he was driving in the night, and his convoy was attacked by these guys, and they killed many people, especially the. Um, the security aids of the of the EMEA. So we are seeing increasing attacks. Boko Haram would want to expand its frontiers beyond the northeast, mm -hmm. especially if it is um, facing so much heat in that area. Uh, if, uh, if the bombardment is too much, they will want to look for a haven somewhere else. And if uh, the north central if, uh, looks like it's safe for them, of course they are going to come here. I remember uh, during the last Salah holiday, they posted a picture, the Shekau faction of Boko Haram posted a picture uh, in which it claimed that it was in a, a forest in Niger State. So it's not uh, really new that uh, those guys are around here. We just have to tighten um, our security and let those who think that those guys can no longer operate beyond the, the northeast, let them know that they are deceiving themselves. Because if the governor has come out to say it, the IG has come out to say it, if you are still living in Denia, you are imagining that they cannot operate beyond the north, northeast, good luck to you. But the challenge to the government and to the armed forces is for them to protect our people and ensure that um, these this, uh, terrorists are dealt with severely. Well, Wale, when you look at this insecurity, spate of insecurity across the country, it becomes worrisome. And it's even difficult for the government to even function well at states and federal governments with, when they have their hands full of insecurity. If you see the United States now, they have a kind of adversary for United States citizens coming to Nigeria. They've listed some states yeah. that's like no go area. It's a very big challenge. More importantly, that security was uh, the major focus, one of the major items that the APC promised to tackle. But uh, since 2015, of course, they created so, so a lot of problems, including Boko Haram. But I think it's becoming uh, more uh, becoming tougher for the regime to tackle insecurity. And I really don't understand why it should be so. Because if people are coming from outside the country with sophisticated weapons, they pass through the border. Then you also have people that are involved in intelligence gathering. How come that you have to wait until they get to Nigeria before and then settle in our forest? And then nothing is done. So I think there is no development you can ever have in any country unless there is stability. So if you don't tackle insecurity, we should not be talking about economic development. At the bottom of this is how we are going to address the proliferation of arms mm. all over the country. Mm. I remember the former for, uh, Minister of Interior said there are 350 million illicit weapons, small weapons, in mm. the hands of non-state actors several mm. years back in Nigeria. Mm. About 500 million in West Africa. So if everybody, I mean, a lot of people are having access to deadly weapons, and we cannot do it. 
some few years ago, the IG said people should hand over their weapons, mopping up and all that. Mm. But we have not seen the impact of that. So it's something that can actually destabilize the democratic structure of Nigeria unless we take decisive action. And I hope the president will realize this and act before it is too late. Hmm. If this kind of trend, if they've succeeded in infiltrating national states, and that's like a very dangerous signal, we yes. thought they've been weakened, we thought their philosophy and their ideology is restricted to the northeastern part of the country, that's Yobe, Adamawa, and uh, Borno. So this situation of infiltration, infiltrating other states, like Niger and Nassau states, it's kind of worrisome. Yes, it's, it's worrisome, but um, it's not um, insurmountable. We just have to keep working hard. I know that um, we, Boko Haram used to be active across the country, but it's like they've closed a lot of their cells, you know. So there were days when they were very active in Kano, very active in Kaduna, very active in the uh, uh, Suleja area. Mm, Remember Jamaja. the Christmas Day bombing? Mm, you know, so, yes, those, so those things no longer happen. But if they are this close to the federal capital, then the security agencies should be worried. And I know that I've read um, some security reports in the past indicating that Boko Haram was waiting for an opportunity to strike in the federal capital. I hope that decisive action will be taken to ensure that the kind of attack that Boko Haram carried out to the federal capital in the past will not uh, be allowed to happen. They need to move. Uh, to nip potential crisis in the board before before uh, it happens, and it's a good thing that this governor has come out. Clearly, it's a big it's a it's, um, um, it's a big deal because he said that some of the um, abductees that they rescued were from 17 states. Hmm. And some of them came from Niger Republic because everywhere Boko Haram goes, they kidnap people. Every operation in a the village, they kidnapped young, young people. It's usually the people who are so old that mm -hmm. they live behind. For the men, the men uh, will be conscripted into their fighting force. And then some of the women, they marry them off to their commanders. They see women more or less like um, spoils of war. Mm. So that's the and the governor. We'll marry them off the governor confirmed that too. So if in Nasarawa State they found such a huge number of Boko Haram abductees, mm. it means that they were already entrenched in the place. And uh, uh, kudos to our special forces for the efforts that they've made. You know to to uncover the activities of these guys and uh, bring them to justice. So we have to keep working hard um, to keep the whole of that area safe because it's too close for comfort. Nasarawa is too close to the seat of power for us to uh, tolerate the activities of Boko Haram in, in that area. Well, so. When you now look it down and you now see it with this thing that we we have, it's another thing. One hand, Boko Haram challenge. Another one is this um, bandits now across the country. So it, it's just amazing that at this time we can be facing these two very, very um, deadly um, groups. It's a very unfortunate thing. Very unfortunate. And uh, we should not forget what is going on in uh, Syria. Even with the support of uh, Russians, they have not been able to deal decisively with ISIS in that country. So if these fellows, these criminals, if they are left to grow wings, they might begin to grow political wings.
seeking political dominion. Because if people are in your forest and you don't know what they are doing, they can turn the place to a stronghold, mm. bringing all sorts of weapons into that place. Because what we are seeing now is that, apart from accosting people on the highways, they now move to the town. Like the petrol dealer that was uh, kidnapped in Adoikiti. Mm. They came to his station and picked him away. So it means what they are doing in other parts of the country, they can also do it here. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately or unfortunately, this Southwest is the hub, is the country's industrial hub. And it used to be the safest. So if this place now becomes uh, made ungovernable mm -hmm. by these bandits, then mm -hmm. I think it will be a bad story for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The president needs to rise up to this occasion and also the National Assembly. We are talking about uh, Do We have a senator representing that constituency. We have members in the House of Rep representing that constituency. Yes. And I've, I've not heard their voices since they are there talking about this issue and bringing it to sharp focus, into national discourse. They have to wait until another citizen has to take it by mobilizing people. And she not Pella is from that uh, Yeah. Some so, yes, it's from that area. I mean, as a senator, it's part of your responsibility mm. to deal with issues, especially very serious issues like this. What have they done? to address that issue until, you know, we find ourselves dealing with a very big they, problem. They, at least they, they, they should have weighed in and uh, we won't draw the attention of uh, security agencies yeah. to what was happening. Because no man can defeat the state. Mm -hmm. It is important that we let um, Sunday Bo know that mm -hmm. he cannot defeat the state. Mm -hmm. And when you confront the state, the the end is usually mm -hmm. not palatable. Mm -hmm. um, Fela confronted the state. Um, Ghani Adams confronted the state. Can't be we, still, the state. we still remember mm -hmm. what happened. Yeah. You know? It was made to languish in jail. Yeah. Uh, Fela, Fela's, Fela's uh, mom was pushed down mm -hmm. from a story building and uh, it, it, uh, it ultimately led to her death. So you can't confront the states the way you have done uh, but the people who have the responsibility of protecting our people mm -hmm. they should know that it is their inaction mm -hmm. that gave rise to someone like uh, Sunday Go, Go, all of uh, a sudden uh, yes to march from nowhere a superstar I'm, I'm uh, uh, looking like uh, uh, people have been the modern, about modern what is, day what is what is man, actually <laughs> What is when, no, what free, is it when on that? It's free to wear what, uh, like, <laughs> what it's not their business. No, they, should, they should be concerned about how we defeat banditry. Too many people getting killed, too many people mm. getting kidnapped. Nowhere is safe. This Lagos is the expressway. There's patrons who are kidnapped on mm. this, on this yeah. road, mm. you know? So, and every time people are forced to pay ransom, you pay sometimes and they still take your life. So, we we must all rise to this challenge and stop our hypocritical approach to to issues like this. I think that the police uh, need to be assisted with game changing equipment that can help us further unravel the activities of these criminals. Because, as I've said before, if at the level of our police formations, police commands. We give them equipment that can track calls, that mm -hmm. can locate, pinpoint and, uh, the exact location of these criminals. Mm. The way um, our friend Abakari okay. is able to do it, the way the RRS in Lagos is able mm -hmm. to do it. Honestly, crime will be brought to the BRS yes, minimum. Mm -hmm. Many people still get away with crime because we lack the technological cutting edge to deal decisively with, uh, with criminals, mm. you know? So the police has to be equipped sufficiently. We can't keep relying on the armed forces for, for things like uh, tackling banditry. Let's, let's leave them to face the clear threat to the territorial integrity of our nation, which is what Boko Haram represents. Because Boko Haram mm. said that it wanted a state of its own. Mm. So, Let's leave them to face Boko Haram and equip the police sufficiently mm. to be able to address the threats posed by, 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 by bandits. Mm. If we were able to do that, honestly, 
um, the next few the next few years we won't be talking about uh, this kind of kidnapping by by bandits and and all that where do we go from here now since the government seems to be so overwhelmed yeah the government is overwhelmed because there is too much concentration of power at the center mm. and that is why it is necessary to decentralize uh, security formations mm. baba Gide has just spoken about getting more information about the criminals. One of the things that the state should have, you know, is a, I mean, the ability to, to, uh, to, to procure drones. Because with drones, you can fly the drones and then locate their location. But there's a lot of bureaucracy in Nigeria. If you want to import, if you want to import drones, you must seek the permission of the National Security Advisor. Yes. I'm aware of those states, and uh, I mean, uh, the state, Mm -hmm. And uh, Niger State, mm. they are trying to procure drones, but it's not that as easy. Mm. Whereas in other countries, even universities can buy drones for agriculture, for monitoring mm. of weather. Mm. You know, the, I mean, institutions are allowed to, to even individuals. So the state should be should have the right to buy drones. It's cheaper. Fly the drones, take their pictures, and then you know where you are going. So you just enter the bush, and then you are looking, you know, as if you are you are crawling mm -hmm. in the dark. So they need to decentralize power. Give more power to the states. I'm sure Makinde, irrespective of these shortcomings, you can't mm -hmm. just push the police any, anyhow. The police commissioner will still take instruction from mm -hmm. the IG. Mm -hmm. So it boils down to the crisis of the Nigerian state in terms of our structure, mm -hmm. in terms of running a garrison state, and our failure to embrace true federalism. We are states should have some level of autonomy, especially on security matters. Julie, let's talk about Amotekun. Those states that they've actually begun operation that they've launched on Motekum, how do you think they've fed so far? I think that um, sometimes we read about positive, we get positive news about uh, Motekum. Sometimes we do not get the sort of news that we want. Um, I'm not happy about some stories of um, relating to Amotekun, killing people in error, shooting mm -hmm. a policeman in error. Mm -hmm. Those things are not good. And you can see some people are saying it's Amotekun, the new SARS, and all that. Mm -hmm. We must do our best to ensure that Amotekun does not degenerate to um, a force that even the people will turn against. Mm -hmm. Because Amotekun um, is our response to the failings of the police. If the police had been able to deal decisively with crime, I don't think there would have been any for Amotekun. Remember, this, the desire for Amotekun uh, became so strident mm -hmm. when after the killing of uh, Baba Fashion uh, mm -hmm. daughter. daughter. Mm -hmm. So the Ocean State We've had some positive news in terms of arrest of uh, kidnappers. We've also had um, from your states mm. because they moved into the extensive uh, 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 national uh, park, which stretches up to the border with Benin Republic. Mm. So those forests are Montecum. Um, is trying to clean up the forest and ensure that it does not harbor the uh, harbor these undesirable elements. And it's so easy for them to move from place to place. I mean, these criminals move, they can move all the way from Niger, from Niger to Kwara, from Ni Kwara to um, Oyo State. Motekun is trying to clean up the forest of Oyo State and uh, uh, keep those places safe. It's unfortunate what has happened in Egogo, you know. Um, I believe that even someone like Sunday Bo uh, could still be useful um, to work with Amotekun because mm -hmm. the, there is a structure in place to address the issue that concerns Sunday Bo. So he should be able to assist Amotekun, provide them with the kind of uh, support that will ensure that they are more effective in or your state than they are currently. Instead of being his own one man, one man, uh, which uh, 
uh, which is illegal in every sense of the word. Uh, the, those activities, the law frowns at um, what he has done. But I believe that Amatekun still has to get more support, more funding from our governors. And uh, our appeal to the Ondo state governor once again, he's done his best to galvanize his colleagues around this Amotekun governors. And this is not the time for him to relax. Mm. He has to keep to working at it to keep the Southwest safe. Because if the Southwest is safe, then um, at least the, everyone will, uh, will be happy. We know that it is the North that we need to really work hard on. But if we are having the same reports from all over the country, mm. uh, then it will, it will be really difficult, not just for the people, but for the government itself. One are you, Amotekun? Yeah, I think um, it's a new organization. So naturally, you expect some shortcomings mm. that the organization would like to perfect, you know, as time goes on. I happen to have the training manual. Mm. Good one. But I think there are also missing aspects. What is important now is capacity building for Amotekun Corps. And we are talking about training not just in terms of unarmed combat. People should be trained on culture, on ethics, on human rights, on civil relations. They need to get the resource person that will teach them, you know, so that when they go out, security is not just about carrying weapons and all that. You must know the way you uh, separate the wheat, I mean, mm -hmm. the wheat from the shaft. So I don't just go out, you know, arresting people that are innocent. Mm -hmm. So I think what Amateko needs is capacity building. They need to undergo more training. And I believe the commanders are aware of this and they will do the right thing. All right. I have the spokesperson of Yoruba Pan Yoruba um, Social Cultural Group, Afeni Ferry, Yinka Odumaki, joining us. Thank you for joining us, Yinka. Good afternoon. Yes, Yinka, what do you make of uh, Sunday Boho's um, onslaught against the bandits in Ibarakpa? Uh, well, we understand why Sunday Boho is outraged like every Yoruba person over the student attacks against our people in the same time by his men. But we have spoken with the Senate Buhu privately and publicly that as a non-state actor, he should kind of, uh, like my friend what I he was saying, his activities should be within the security structure, assisting the state and not taking frontally as the personal battle that is fighting. Uh, because uh, my brother was saying the implications of individuals taking over the states, especially a brutal state like Nigeria. And um, the, the, but we cannot say, we cannot know the conditions that led to the attorney who rising up, nature of was any vacuum. Uh, what is going on is terrible. Like, look, look, look at those states. And up by was killed on the streets mm -hmm. in the afternoon. Funke Olakune, as fashion on his daughter, was killed over a year ago. All the people who have been arrested, who have been tried for her mother, are full of uh, the deputy register of, of uh, Futa was killed only four days ago. There is no responsible government that will allow this thing to go on. The government did not, not say major like will live on those states. No. Vacate the forest reserves. Uh, you can, you, you should, you, only animals go and occupy the reserves now, not human beings. The, the reserves were created by the states for a purpose for, of, uh, of, of afforestation. But how can you as human beings go and occupy those reserves and be claiming that you have a right to eat if you occupy human beings? No, it's not so. And I, and I think that the federal government should cooperate with the United States government to enforce its lawful directive over these health men. You can, let me pay this bill. We'll be right back after this timeout. Let me just go for this commercial break. we talk to you after the break.
Thank you for staying with us. We still have the spokesperson of Afeni Ferry with us, Yika Odumaki. Yes, Yika. Before we went yes. on that break, you were explaining something. Yes, I would believe that we we are. It's not that we are not paying by what the headsmen are doing against our people. Even when we appeal openly to Sunday Buhu to take it easy, is to avert a possible breakdown of law and order, which has not been anybody's interest. Yeka, you people said yes. you've had to caution Sunday Buhu that nobody can stay, nobody can take on the states, that it cannot afford to do what it's doing now. So that does not in any way justify what Sunday Buhu is doing, Yika. No, 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 no. We have, we have, we have, we have not justified what Sunday Buhu is doing. Mm. Because remember that when the coalition of Northern Youth said the people should leave the North, we forced them and said, no, you have no power to do such a thing. So we cannot now say because it's on our land now and it's at our interest, we should support the same thing. But we should, Sunday Buhu should allow the state actors to deal with this matter. And the state actors should be responsible enough. Uh, and ensure that they do what they should do. There's, there are governors in these states. They must do their jobs in terms of security. The primary prior, prior, prior job is to secure their people. Mm. And when their people become insecure, mm. it's not a plus for them. Mm. And it is that kind of situation that will give rise to people like Sandy Buhu rising up. Mm. People like Sandy Buhu, if they have capacity, they can support the state structure, like Wally said. Like I'm take one day, then they can work with them, but they should not frontally do as if they are the one taking up the battles. That would give a wrong impression. Yoruba, we are Yoruba. We know how to handle things like this. We don't behave like that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your view of Amatekun and um, his activities uh, so far? Are you impressed? Well, you know, Amatekun was not fully formed before we all this started. I'm not mm. in the making, but we appeal, we appeal to the governors. They should put I'm on strong footing, put strong structure on the ground. So that because a, a Lagos or, or your state is bigger than the Republic, that's the country. They have army, they have everything. So for us to maintain informal security structure like I'm should not be a problem for us. Our governors should do it well so they can perform excellently and show the Nigerian security forces how to secure a, a people. Mm. So fi uh, finally, ultimately, when you want to advise the federal government how to handle cases of farmers' head clashes across the country, what is the best solution? People are losing their lives in Zafara, Sokoto, yes, Kasina, on a daily basis. Uh, Kaduna. That's the point that we are making. That what is your suggestion uh, to government so that these killings across our country can, can, mm. can come to an end? In my brother, the, the government should be should garage up and behave like the government. Government should not behave. We know that the president is the commander is the uh, commander in chief. Yes, the, the commander in chief up to all Nigerians. Igor Dumaki is the spokesperson of um, Afeni Ferry, Yoruba Pan Social Cultural Group, and uh, Igor has never held back in criticizing <laughs> <laughs> this government at any time. <laughs> Ironically, uh, Igor Dumaki was the spokesperson of uh, Buhari campaign organization in 2011. 2011. That was enough time for us. When they ran with uh, Pastor yeah, today, yeah, yeah. Bakari, I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember. That was that enough time for us. So many things have changed. Things have changed. Yeah. Things have changed. Yeah. Things have changed. Yeah. And it has been very, very vociferous when it comes to criticizing yeah. um, the federal government. All right. There's no end in sight yet regarding the industrial crisis rocking the university system in Nigeria. At a joint briefing in Abuja on Friday, the leadership of the Non-Academic Staff Union of University and Education Institutions, NASU, and the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, decided to embark on a nationwide strike from February 5th over the non-implement of the agreement with the federal government. Let's hear from Peter Diemi, the General Secretary of NASU. Members of NASU and SANU 
shall embark on an indefinite, comprehensive, and total strike with a fire from midnight of Friday, 8 February 2021. 5th February 2021. Two, that two weeks' notice effective, effective from today. Friday, 22nd January 2021, is hereby given to government and relevant stakeholders of this development. But actually, I don't understand. It took us the better part of 2020, mm. ASU was on strike and it paralyzed all our institutions, universities. Now, this is Nasu and Sanu. Do you understand? Nasu, that's a non academic staff union and senior staff union. Is this a situation of holding the federal government to ransom? That the federal government might have implemented the agreements with Nasu, then you have to show that we're also here. No, it's, um, it's such a bad time to do what they are doing. I will have expected them to to embark on this embark on this mm. the same time mm. yeah. let the two of you the two groups asu sanu nasu, nasu. pursue your agenda simultaneously we can in which um, students have been at home for 10 months situation. yeah for 10 months they've been at home throughout last year you are now you are now um, saying that you want to start another i was reading that um abu they just told the students to resume on the 25th which yes. is tomorrow yes so you are you now been, you have been on the first of february you, you are waiting for them to resume for you to then start your own and they can cripple the system of course of course they can even even some some asu members are as well sanu members because they are senior staff Mm. Uh, that, the one running admin, some of them records belong. office, and so some of them, some uh, academic staff yes. are also part of Sano. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Because okay. Sano is senior staff association yes. of Nigeria University. Yes, so uh, once you are a senior staff, you could belong. Mm. That is, and I'm saying that some members of us who are also part of their own uh, union, it's um, is a long time to come up with this. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm disturbed for those students who have lost a year mm. because 10 months, 10 months is a whole year. So they've lost a year. Now you are saying that you too, you want to move on. 5th right? of February. And look when at, schools look are at, giving notices of resumption. Look mm. at some of the things that they are talking about. They are saying, okay, that 90% of their, of NASU members support the strike. 11% uh, are against it, 6% indifferent. Uh, then um, they are saying also that um, they oppose the inconsistencies in IPPIS, non-payment of end allowance. Of course, this end allowance was one of the critical planks upon which ASU so pursued a, a, a strike uh, agenda. And then uh, talking about non-payment of areas of national minimum wage, delay in renegotiation of uh, federal government NASU and SANU 2009 agreement. This was also part of ASU's, de demand. ASU's demands. Mm -hmm. The non-payment of retirement benefits of former members, neglect and poor funding of state universities. That's what they want the Minister of Labor to address. When states on their own set up universities, shouldn't they uh, find a way to fund it? What, what has the federal government got to do with this? Will the federal government decree sufficient funding of state universities by fiat? Will they decree it? Will they uh, simply order states to, be, to fund their state universities uh, uh, sufficiently? Because I, I don't understand uh, this kind of uh, demand. And then um, they also talked about non constitution of visitation panels for varsities. Although they are saying that 
this, this is the only demand that has been met. That is the demand that has to do with um, constitution of visitation panel for uh, Nigerian universities. So it's, uh, it's a terrible time to be an undergraduate, mm. uh, actually, in undergraduate in a public, public, public university. Um, the private universities, look at that one in uh, Kiti. Afebola. Afebola. They are not bothered about this. Uh, other private uh, universities are For not bothered. And it's not more and more people. And it's not everybody that can afford this. Can afford, yes. Quite expensive. They are expensive. They are expensive. Hmm. But uh, one of the advantages that they are in the form of dislocation. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, to the academic four calendar. years before years. Uh, and so you just when you are due to graduate, graduate is when you graduate. Yeah. This um, stability. These university workers have not really... And they were saying that, look, it is not in our way. Uh, it is not uh, our character, in our character to just go on strike at the drop of the hat. But what are you doing? You if it was not your character, are you now beginning to imbibe it as, as, as a character and choosing a very inauspicious time mm. for it? Well, this is the same thing we are looking at. And we begin to wonder that most universities have they've already fixed dates mm. for resumption I, dates. I, I, and I these think people, it's not strategic for them to lose public sympathy. Yes. I mean, they are not teaching service providers. So we know the university cannot do without them. Yeah. But, but I, I wonder what they were doing when ASU was negotiating with the government. I doubt if they were... All of those 10 months. Yeah, if mm -hmm. they will have embarked on this system, on this strike. Mm -hmm. If, maybe if ASU didn't win that battle, they wouldn't probably, you know, bother themselves about They are just looking at, okay, ASU are able to bring some concessions. So they should also mm -hmm. go on strike. I don't think it is a popular um, strike. It's very unfortunate that in Nigeria, we are destroying the philosophy behind public education, I mean public institution. Public institutions are designed all over the world as a kind of a melting pot for students from different backgrounds. You see, uh, you know, the son of, of a hunter, of a... Yes, yeah. during that time, we didn't have the same room. private universities. He would mm. be in the same room with the son we of a minister. Yes. Everybody, state universities, universities. We have an institution where we are creating a case system, where if I have to from the rich home, from your primary school to university to master's, mm -hmm. you will not even understand what poverty is. Yes. You never interact. You won't go to any public school. You don't go any public school. school. You don't know you students that come to school without, mm. without shoes, without food, you go hungry all day. You know, so, you know and you, some of these children come back at the end of the day to leave Nigeria. Mm. So they become ministers, they become. This. So when you are talking about demands of poor people, they've never had the experience. So the philosophy of public institution is, so, is to normalize relationship in every society, to build harmony mm. between the rich and the poor mm. and create a kind of perception where Bridge wherever you are, you respect your status, you understand what your people are going through. We are broken that now. You have a decision away from poor who you are going to spend about eight, nine years before you graduate. Mm. Whereas people from rich homes, you go to private schools and then four years you graduated. Then you go for a master's in London, you come back and become a senator or minister. Mm. So it's going to have very serious consequence mm. in the future. Mm. Mm. And these days, sir, they, will, they will first uh, ask where you graduated. Yeah. No. yeah. Uh, they, they don't even want uh, to take people, products of public schools. Mm. Mm. Because before our eyes, we've seen standards drop drastically, and we've seen um, a lack of uh, commitment to to work mm. in the university mm. system. Mm. People are much more committed to um, um, their own personal interests, mm. what comes to their pocket. So it's, it's, it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. I, we are all products of public universities, mm. and it's unfortunate that mm. things are this bad. It, 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 it wasn't this bad in our time, and mm. I really don't envy students, um, products of, uh, I mean, students of public universities at this time because you lose your time in school mm. and it could work against you. I've, I've talked about an incident a guy who spent three extra years in school for no fault of his, but because of all of these strikes. And he got an opportunity 
um, for job placement somewhere. And no, what were they asking there? above the age. Yes, it was above the age by two years. Mm. It was above the age by two years. Level. Meanwhile, if he had graduated at the time that he mm. ought to have graduated, it would have been within that. He would have been within the age ceiling. So, mm -hmm. for no fault of his, he mm -hmm. lost an opportunity for job placement. And now, you can see after Asus ten months at home, ten months, effectively one whole year, mm. uh, Sanu and Nasu, Nasu, they are coming up with with uh, demands. Very similar to us, uh, to mm -hmm. the demands that ASU has Seems made. Seems like show that yes. was ASU. Instead of them to pursue those demands, at the time that ASU was doing it, they chose to wait until government um, reached some compromise with ASU before. The, the other day they were talk, saying that, okay, the 40 billion that they were not going to agree to the uh, sharing formula proposed for the 40 billion end academic allowance. It is called end academic allowance. <laughs> Government released 40 billion to ASU. ASU itself said it was not going to share this money with anyone. But uh, reason prevailed in the end. And they, they agreed that, OK, let Sanu and, uh, and uh, NASU take, I think, 30% of that money. Our friends in NASU and uh, Sanu. They are complaining that they don't that they disagree with the sharing formula and all that. But it, the thing was end academic allowance. You are not an academic staff. You are not <laughs> academic staff. You have to benefit from from something that was meant for academic staff, and you are still quarrelling about the sharing formula. You can see that in their demands now, they are just simply talking about non-payment of end allowance, which means that they want government to deal with them on a separate basis. Mm, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and but the funds are not there. Now, we should tell Mr. Peter that they might not necessarily result to strike yeah. in achieving this. Mm -hmm. And if we have a proactive federal government that I'm talking to Minister Indigi and Festus Keyamo now, by this time they should be talking to them now. Sure. They should not allow this ultimatum, they should not allow this 5th of February mm -hmm. to just go close. What is today's date? Today is um, January 24th. 24. 24. 24. So it is not this 5th of February mm. that the federal government should call these people. Mm. We want to buy tomorrow this negotiation. By Friday, one week will be gone. Uh -huh. mm. This negotiation should start. The, the minister should meet with NASA immediately. And I hope the minister will be able to persuade them. Uh, the other important thing that our government should do is that we are talking about funding. We need to be more creative. You see, when people are talking about free education, it's not possible and all that, people should look at examples we have had in the past. When I wanted to introduce free education in 1954, he started in 1952. And what he did was that he levied every adult above the age of, from 18 years old, they levied them salt tax. There is no way you are not going to buy salt. Hmm. So he said it is something that you know, concerns everybody. Hmm. And then they got somebody from UN who was a less part of statistics to calculate the number of children in primary schools. Mm. So they waited between 1952 to 1944, uh, 1954, two years. Mm. It was that tax. They introduced capitation tax, 10 shillings, uh, 10, uh, 10 shillings then salt tax. So if you are buying toss, uh, tax and uh, salt from anywhere, certain percent will go to the post of the government. Mm. Every opposition, including British government, they said it was not possible. But by 1954, how we launched free education, free health? Because he was able to raise funds, mm. you know, from the public. So our government should be more creative mm. in terms of trying to raise funds so that we can have an education system that is well funded. Instead, of, I mean, far different from what we have now. I think Mama, the, Mama, the, 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 even, the even some states, uh, mm. some states have introduced the education tax. Okay. So mm. for every mm. every transaction that mm. you do with that state government, mm. I know mm. that Kano is one of them. Yeah. Mm. Um, and probably Lagos. I'm not so sure. I think. Hmm? Lagos too a bit. I know that Kano mm -hmm. has the sure education, mm -hmm. education um, tax. Uh, tax. So every transaction that the state gets into with you yeah. at the point of payment, that deduction is a statutory deduction. Yeah. That statutory deduction is made yeah. and it is used to fund uh, the refurbishment of schools yeah. and, and the building yeah. of new schools. Yeah. And you just devise a way. And you see that 
Kano, they even had an education summit mm. where the, the ideas came up. And as we speak, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is also helping them in funding um, the, mm. the reconstruction mm. Mm. of their many schools because mm. the, the funds are just not there. Yeah. Mm. So the federal government is under tremendous pressure to mm. fund the universities. Mm. And the kind of money that ASU is looking for is just not there. So they too have to come up with something. Yeah. Maybe uh, it will be built into, um, I don't know, some form of taxation mm -hmm. for uh, even contractors. And yeah. some of these federal schools, or the school fees big, they pay big, uh, is, no, is no longer real, uh, realistic. Not, uh, yeah, yeah. As in, yes. Yeah. Some of this federal university, yes. because if you have primary secondary school that people are paying over one million, mm. we're not advocating for that. Mm. But uh, <laughs> for another university, a lot of them now, yeah, yeah, a yeah, lot of the state universities mm. are actually asking for so much now. No. Mm. Just because mm. education is not cheap, we have to divide. And that was why that was why we are suggesting Creativity. that they should mm. they should you find know, alternative mm. sources of if revenue. If students of Unilag pay up, up to hundred thousand, they need to find alternative sources for of, fundraising. of funding mm. for the for the for our ivory towers. Otherwise, mm. they won't be able to say, because now you have federal universities now, mm. so even the number of schools have increased. Yeah. So how Tremendous. do you find the fund uh, to fund all of these schools? You have to think out, out of the box and, and get, uh, uh, have, create avenues for sufficient funding of these schools. Otherwise, there will continue to be industrial disharmony mm. between the workers and, and uh, the uh, university management because you can't tell us not to continue to uh, make these agitations. And of course, Nasu and Sano too, they have joined them. So if it's going to be built into the, our ta uh, taxation system, mm. they need to do it. Let's just find a way to, uh, to look for more, more funding for, for the funding. universities. All right. It's been close to 120 minutes of our Sunday special edition of Journalist Hangouts, and um, we've looked at security and we've looked at the problem within the educational sector. I want to thank you, Wali Adeye. Thank, thank you. you for your contribution in the last uh, <laughs> about 120, <laughs> close to 120 minutes. Thank you. And the minister himself, thank you. We will return tomorrow with our regular programming mm. at uh, for, yes. um, 5 p.m. Every day, 5 p.m. Journalist Hangout, and we'll repeat at um, 11 p.m. And that's our own Journalist Hangout on Sunday. Join us for tomorrow edition of the program. If you are also on YouTube, you can catch us live on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. Bye for now, and please stay safe.